Good evening. I'm your warm-up act. I'm only on for 10 minutes. Um, but unusually, not only am I going to talk, but I'm actually going to ask you to do something at the end. So um, please listen. Um, that's my name. I'm Peter Abrahams. I've been in IT all my life. And there's only a few people who've been in it as long as I have. I can see one of my friends who worked with me right at the beginning as well, um, but that's unusual. Um, and in the last 12 years or so, basically since I've retired, I've been researching and writing about accessibility. I'm a member of the BCS, that's the, not to be named the British Computer Society, though that's what it stands for, um, is the Chartered Institute for IT, so it's the formal organization that runs IT in this country. Um, and within it, we have a specialist group that looks at digital accessibility. And I'm one of the members of that. And my aim today is to explain how I'm going about trying to improve accessibility education and training, um, and then to enlist your help in doing that. So what's the issue, um, and it'd be interesting to see if anyone disagrees with this, but as far as I'm concerned, accessibility education is limited and uncoordinated, um, and accessibility is not recognized as a key skill in very many places. Um, so because it's not recognized as a skill, it doesn't get you don't get training for it either. So the ex Digital Accessibility Specialist Group has been looking at why accessibility is a minority sport, as it were, though you're the, you're the exception, um, and recognize that one of the issues is that it's not recognized as a skill and we don't have the education for it. So we set up a project to try and address this. And Having done a bit of research on this, we came across or knew about a thing called the Skills Framework for the Information Age Foundation. A question, how many of you recognize that, that name? Nobody. Now, that's, that's, that's very sad. This is, this is part of the problem. And I'll explain why it's important in a moment. It is an international organization. It According to its website, it has representation in most of the countries in the world. It says nearly 200. I'm not quite sure how many countries there are in the world, but that must be nearly all of them. And what it does, and I'll show you examples of this in a moment, it provides clear descriptions of the skills and levels of responsibility that are required with inside IT departments. What it doesn't do is it doesn't try and specify how the organization should be structured or what the roles and the jobs are. It just says, these are the skills you need. It's up to you to decide how you fit them all together. Why is this important or why is this organization important? <coughs> Sophia is used in two basic ways. It's used by organizations, and I suspect it's used by some of the organizations that's represented in this hall, even if you don't know about it, um, so that they, the organizations can define the jobs and the roles that are required with inside their IT department. And now you can see why this is important, because if accessibility is not mentioned, um, it's very difficult for your job to come up. The other thing that, that Sophia does is it is used by the BCS. There's an organization with inside the BCS called Sophia Plus, and that takes the definitions in Sophia and works out what education and training you require for each of those roles and responsibilities. Um, so you now have that, and then you come up 
you will find that very many universities and colleges around the world will take the information from CIFIA Plus and based on that, we'll work out what the curricula for IT courses should be. Um, and slightly to her side, but important nowadays. Um, okay, another question. How many of you know about the International Association of Accessible Professionals? Quite a lot more. Right. I put that on this chart um, partly because Alistair said, please talk about it, um, but mainly because I, the, one of the things that the IAP does is provide education. So it's just one of the other education organisations that could provide what is defined in Sophia Plus. So let me just show you what Sophia Plus looks like. This, it's a framework. So what we have is it, we break it down and there's some very large sections. So development and implementation is one big section. And within that, there's user experience. So we're getting, you can see we're now getting into the area where you may be interested. And within the user experience, there's user experience analysis. So that's the way it breaks down. And this is very nearly the whole of what it says about user experience analysis. Each skill is, is a sh one or two pages at most about, about the skill. So it has, at the beginning, it has a section which describes it in general. And then it describes different skill levels the higher the number, the more managerial it is. The lower number, the more worker it is. And right down the bottom, there's a section in the, one of the doer's jobs. And it says, identifies and describes requirements of users with special needs, e.g. resulting from physical disability. That is the only mention of what we might call accessibility in the user experience analysis section. So if you, if you say we need a user experience analyst, no one will realize that they need education in accessibility. And if you look at the this other user experience skills, there's absolutely nothing at all. So that means there's a problem. If, you're, if your organization is using this, and they define you as requiring the skill of a user experience analysis, they will not think that you need to know about accessibility. Um, and they will not train you in that. And no one will, will, well, no one will get trained in it. So how can you help with this? Well, what, what we've done, what, I, what the specialist group has done, is that we've taken those skills definitions, and we've taken about 10 of them which have specific relevance to accessibility, and we made additions and changes to it. We've, on the basis that it's still got to be within a page or two, we can't put very much in, but we put a little bit extra in. And we need more people to review that. We've gone through one iteration, and we've got need more people to it. So what my request to all of you is, are you willing to spend 30 minutes to 60 minutes having a look at what we've done so far and commenting on it? Um, I would love it if you came along and said, you ought to change this or you ought to add that. But I would also love it if you just said, it's wonderful. <laughs> um, because when I go back to Sophia with this, if I can say I've shown it to a lot of people and they say it's great, then it should go, it will have a better chance of going through. So after this meeting, um, probably tomorrow morning, I will use the meetup list and I will send out a note to all of you explaining what I've told you tonight and giving you a link to the work we've done so far so you can have a look at it. So thank you all very much in advance for helping me with this. Um, if there are any questions, um, 
please ask now if you, or if you wish to talk to me later, I'm going to be around in all the, all the food and drink sections. So you're very welcome. Has anybody got a question about that at all? I must have been very clear. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, so we'll share that information um, afterwards. Um, and equally, if there's anybody here that has anything in particular they want to talk about or share with the meetup or kind of get, kind of to use the meetup for this kind of thing, do get in touch. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.